Okay, so today we're going to talk about something that you came across, all of you came across at some point in your careers, or this is exactly what you do every day, but this is something that can follow us independently on many years you have in your career. So what we're going to talk about today is alternative ways to get rid of tracking markers like this. And because these tracking markers sometimes have like very different shades in color, you can not sometimes extract them easily by flipping the channels or by pulling a key or something like that just to get the mat out of it. Maybe you can, maybe this is not the ultimate example of the things that I'm trying to talk about here today, but you know what I'm talking about when you have tracking markers that uh, have like this weird mix in color that it's not easy to extract them with a normal key. So we're going to talk about alternative ways of cleaning plates with tracking markers like this and one of these ways will involve matrix multiplication via a color matrix okay so we're gonna do a quick recap on matrix multiplication i'm not gonna get into what a vector is what a matrix is it's more about just focus on the multiplication part multiplication between two matrices or a matrix and a vector which is how color will be interpreted in this context but this will be one of the things that the technique that i'm going to show you will use and that's why I'm, i want to do this recap with you so you have matrix one matrix two in this example and the result will be this and how we get this result well First of all, in order for two matrices qualified to be multiplied by each other, either two matrices or a matrix and a vector, which can be written also in form of a matrix, the number of columns of this first matrix have to match the number of rows of the second one. If they don't match, effectively, in mathematical notation, you cannot multiply them. If you put this on the software, maybe you'll figure out that what you mean or what you meant is the other way around, but in mathematical notation, you cannot do that. So in this case, we have one, two, three columns, and we're gonna multiply by the second metric that has one, two, three rows. So they qualify for that so we can advance with our calculations. So the way that the multiplication will happen is we're gonna go on the horizontal direction on the matrix one, multiplied by the vertical direction on matrix two. And that result will be placed horizontally on this one here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply one times zero plus two times two, already on the second term of the first column of matrix two, plus three times two, and this result will be the first term on your resulting matrix. So six plus four is gonna be 10, right? So we've exhausted the first column, and the same here, we've exhausted this first column. So let's jump now to the second term that is part of the second column, still in the same row. So we're gonna maintain this row as well. Let's do it, so one times one is one, two times zero is zero, and three times one is three. All of this combined, three times one, it's gonna be four. So there you go, you have four. Then you're gonna jump to the other column, but still maintaining this row, okay? So again, one times two is two, two times one is two, and three times two is six. All of this combined is gonna be 10. And then, because you already exhausted the columns in here, it's time to change the row. And we're gonna do the same column by column. So what we're gonna have is now two times zero, which is zero, plus one times two, which is two, plus two times two, which is four. All of this combined is gonna be six. And you're gonna do the same as before until you exhausted all the other columns and rows. And this will be your resulting matrix. Another thing important to recap, I would say, is the dimension of each matrix after we already know if they qualify or not for a multiplication. But once we know the dimension of both matrices that you're multiplying, it's possible to know exactly what will be the dimension of the result of this multiplication. So in this example, we have three rows times three columns, right? And on this one is the same. So to qualify, what I said is if the number of columns is the same as the number of rows on the second one, they qualify for the multiplication, okay? Otherwise they wouldn't be qualifying. And the remaining numbers here, once you put them together, they will be the result dimension of this multiplication. So the resulting is gonna be another three by three matrix. So this is very uh, handy. For example, if you have matrix one, if now you multiply this by matrix two, okay? So if you had these matrices, this won't be possible. Why? Because this is a matrix two by two, and this is a matrix three by three. So the number of columns here is not equivalent to the number of rows in here. So this cannot be multiplied at all. Let me give you another example. So if you have matrix one, then you wanted to multiply by matrix two, 
Okay, so this will be 3 by 3 matrix and this will be a 3 by 1. So now this number is the same as this one, so they qualify for this multiplication and the resulting matrix will be one that has dimensions 3 by 1. And what's a 3 by 1? It's the same dimension as this guy. So this is the foundation on how you multiply a matrix by a vector and this is exactly what happens with the color matrix. So I'm going to give you a real example. Okay, let's say that you have a matrix and then you have a vector that, for example, it's a color. I'm going to call matrix 2. Let's say the color yellow, which is 1 in red, 1 in green, and 0 in blue. So if this is yellow, what will be the result of this yellow once you multiply this? Let's do the multiplication. Let's do this like this, multiplied by this like this. So let's do this by hand, so you get the hang of this. So 2 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 0. See, 2 times 1, 1 times 1, and 1 times 0. So we've exhausted the columns on this one, otherwise we will have another column here. So it's time to change the row. So it's going to be 1 times 1 plus 3 times 1 plus minus 1 times 0. We don't have more columns, change the row then. Okay, so now it's going to be 2 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 3 times 0. And this will be your resulting matrix that we already established that it's going to be a 3 by 1 matrix. So 2 times 1, this is going to be 2, this is going to be 1, and this is going to be 0. Okay, so 2 plus 1 plus 0, this will be the equivalent of 3. This will be 1, this will be 3, and this will be 0. So this one is going to be 4, this one is going to be 2, this is 1, and this is 0. It's going to be 3. This will be the resulting color in red, green, and blue. Okay? Because we can write a color as a vector like this. Okay, let's go back to Nook and let's put this matrix on this color to see if that's the result that we have. Okay, so let's put these numbers in. So our constant will be our yellow color, which will have a vector defined like this, which we know that is yellow color because this will be red, green, and blue. So 1, 1 on the first two terms will give us yellow. Cool. So now let's put the color matrix. And by the way, this color matrix has nothing to do with the normal matrix node here, this one. They operate completely different and they're not the same. This matrix here we're not going to cover today, but this is a convolution matrix which operates in a completely different way and achieves completely different things, so it's not the same. So color matrix is actually a normal matrix to do normal operations such as multiplication, which is the one that we're seeing at the moment. So let's put now the numbers that we've defined randomly. So 2, 1, 1, 1, 3. So our result was 3, 4, 3. Let's see if that's what we have. 3, 4, 3. So now you understand how the color matrix works. A lot of people don't know from my experience how this works. Now you do. So it's a good thing. So let's now use this color matrix to do what I've laid out in the beginning and that's the actual core of what we're discussing here today. So I have this plate. I have two versions of this plate. One denoise and one but with a normal noise in it. And um, you want to clean things always on the denoise plate for obvious reasons. So you're going to put the noise back on top if that's what What's needed or you're gonna deliver this if that's your role you're gonna deliver this to comp with no noise at all and then they'll put the noise back on top so let's now go through the channels and let's see what's the cleanest one by cleanest I mean where do we see less the tracking markers and I can see that on the red channel which is the one that I'm at at the moment it's the one that we see less so let's see if we can make it even less visible how with a color matrix and one thing that I didn't say before is if you put the diagonal here with ones this will be called the identity matrix and this is the starting point for you not to have any type of transformations as soon as you put this one plugged in your image. There's reason for that and it's very useful. I'm not going to cover this at the moment because it goes outside the scope of what we're trying to achieve here. So now that we know how the matrix work, I will leave the calculations just for a second. Because I've been playing with color matrix for so long, now I develop like a field when I mess with these values here. So the goal here is to put these tracking markers on my red channel, which is the channel that I'm at, even less visible. You will also develop this field after you play with this for, for a while, but if you go up and down with the numbers, you will get more separation or less separation. In this case, I want less separation on the red channel. So let's see what uh, this will give me. And by the way, I'm just going to apply this on the red channel. That's the channel that I want to change. So this matrix in here, each element will be red, green, and blue, red, green, and blue, red, green, and blue. 
that will be multiplied in the way that we just looked at before. So if you go up and down with the numbers, you will see that this will change of course the channel you're in so the goal again is to have even less separation between these tracking markers there's a limit of course to what you can do so you're going to try to push that limit now that i have this what i'm going to say is this is the cleanest one right so what i'm going to say is all right i'm going to put the other channels as clean as this one too so i'm going to use a shuffle and i'm going to say now that my green channel that before it's this i'm going to say that now this green channel will be the same as the red channel so we're going to say that the green is going to be the same as the red so we swap those channels so now if you look at here both red and green they are the same you see they're changing here but in reality they're not changing here at all one thing that i have to do is to match the luminance of the green channel as it was before so i need to go on the green channel here which was my main image and I'm going to say that this luminous needs to match now with this new green channel. Of course, you can have ways to do this a bit more procedurally, but we're going to do this manually for now so you get the idea of how these things work. So I'm going to put a wipe and I'll try to match them as closely as possible. Okay, so now it's matching. And now I just want to apply this on the green channel. So now I have my red channel here, green, cleaned as well. And now I have to do the same for the blue because the blue will still have this marker. So I'm going to use another shuffle. And I say that my blue is going to be the same as my red. Again, red is my base. And I'm going to match the luminance of this new blue channel by what it was before. So I'm going to put another gray, apply it just on the blue channel. And I'm going to compare these two. So they're very close, but this needs to go down a bit. Okay, something like that. Cool. So now I have my red, green and blue, both of them as clean as possible. So here we have it. We don't see the markers anymore. Almost. This is not the end of the story though. So now what we want to do is we want to apply this result not on top of everything, but just where the markers are. So how can we isolate the markers? Well, we have several ways, but what I want to cover here today is the color matrix node. So I'm going to open another color matrix and I'm going to try to have as much separation as possible overall. So I will have an easy way to try to extract and again I developed already a certain feeling for these things so I'll try to get as much separation as possible you have to go really easy on these values by the way you see that I'm on the decimals here by playing with the values I discovered that is actually the best result so if I go on the blue channel I have total separation cool that's exactly what I want okay and by looking at the channels I can see that I have some fainted values in here so I'm just going to open a grade I'm gonna try to crank those values up a bit. Okay, so this is my mat. Now I want to basically apply this result that I've cleaned just on those regions. So I'm gonna use a key mix. I forgot to just say that this mat is only valid on the blue channel. Okay, so I'm just gonna shuffle the blue channel like that. And let's see, all right. It seems like this mat is a little bit too short. So I'm gonna grow it with an road, maybe with a caution filter. We still have this rim with colors that they're not so pleasant. So because the red channel is where everything is being referred to, let's see what else we can do to clean this even further. What if we put a blur so these things will be even less noticeable? I want to apply the blur just on the red channel, but let's see what it does. So if I blur it, blur it, blur it, blur it, it will be a point in which we don't distinguish this as much. Let's see if this is enough. Yeah, there you go, it's enough. So before and after, before and after. So now if you look at the channels, they're much cleaner. Still not clean 100%, but they're much, much cleaner. So now you can apply a technique to basically even out the screen. I have my own tool that I'm not gonna get into how it works at the moment, but this is based on the IBK stack, basically. It's called Keybody. And what I can say is from this plate, I want to basically create an IBK stack. Like I want to erode that region so I can get all the hand inside that mat and then I'm gonna patch it and now I can create an even screen so I say calculate there you go so now it's completely even and now if you flip between the channels the trackers are completely gone and this is a semi-automatic way that with some luck if the lining in the plates are similar you can get this setup to be passed on your teams and different people to get rid of it semi-automatically. If you wanna go and add the noise, is to basically minus the denoise by the plate, and then you'll be able to add this original noise back on top as a plus. Okay, so now we have the noise back, back on top. 
so now you can compare this with what it was before and it's completely even you're not losing any detailing here so you'll have all the edges and all that stuff by the way this tool also allows you to choose what's the color that you want to put in the even screen i've put this set as an automatic way as you've seen but you can actually choose the color any color that i want any shade that i want uh, any value that i want uh, it's possible even different colors i want i can do that but this is optional the cool thing here is that you have all the channels cleaned completely from the tracking markers and the color matrix allows us to separate the colors so you can use them as mats so the explanation in the beginning was a little bit overkill but i think it's useful for you to start understanding how these things work to achieve different things and as you can see this can be used for simple things like this with a very good degree of success and um, now that you know how color matrices work you'll be able to out of a certain shade what would be the matrix that you would have to apply to the image in order for these trackers become blue this might be a tech challenge actually one of these days